Automotive Heaven with Richie Z. We found a beautiful little jewel on Route 66 in Wilmington, Illinois. Route 66, Illinois. The beginning of Route 66 was downtown Chicago and it went all the way to Los Angeles, California from like Michigan Avenue and Adams where the Art Institute is to LA. And it all started in around the early 1930s. Now, if you ever traveled Route 66, we're in a little travel trailer here, camper they call it. This was done in 1958. Beautiful thing, we're at the classic, Midwest Classic Car Museum in Wilmington, Illinois. We found a jewel that you're going to love. And if you don't come out here, you're really cheating yourself. So join me with another episode of Automotive Heaven with Richie Z. Automotive Heaven with Richie Z. For more info, man, go to my website, richiez.com, R-I-C-H-I-E-Z-I-E.com. I'll take you to Chicago history and automotive heaven. Um, you know, I just want to do a little uh, thing about, we've been out of commission for a little while. There's a few things that have been going on you'll hear about later on, but I do historic downtown tours. Uh, we do a little bit of uh, a ghost and haunted stuff in there. We do some historic Chicago churches, Al Capone and the mob story. Everybody wants to hear about that one. And uh, we, we talk a lot about the lakefront and the uh, stunning architecture of the city of Chicago. For more information, we also do not only the tours, the tours start out with anywhere from 2 to 50 people. We'll run a bus if we have to, okay? Um, I also do uh, house parties and presentations on Chicago history. To book Richie Z, call 312-841-2560. But don't forget, you can always go to the website richiez.com. There's a lot of stuff we're working on. You're going to be seeing a lot of shows from car museums, and we got some real classic things coming up. We're in front of a 1947 Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. Now, what's really unique about this car, it was done after the war. It's probably the most luxurious American-styled car after World War II. One real cool thing is we're on Route 66, but I brought in my friend today, John Weiss. Now, you've been on my radio show, I think, three or four times. At least that, yeah. And I've been on one of your tours, I remember, a few years ago. This guy, I've been talking to, we've, we've been friends for over 10 years, I oh, believe. We did that the first the recording uh, over at the Chicken Basket there. Uh, years, they're still playing it. Yeah, it's still on my it's still on my podcast site. There's over 100 shows on RichieZ.com. But John Weiss, I brought him in here today because we're on Route 66, and he's the Illinois historian of Route 66. Now I asked him before we started today, when do you think the peak period of Route 66 was, John? You know, trying to answer that question, it starts in 1926. But as far as I'm concerned, after the war, people wanted to travel. And Bobby Troop, he wrote that song, Get Your Kicks, on Route 66 in 1946. So I think 46 to 47 era, I think that's when people started to travel and uh, created what we now call nostalgia. When we look back, we look back at that era of the travel and what they were doing. Because remember, Route 66 wasn't a tourism road. It was a road that was being used. But it ended up tourism. You could take Route 66 and go to places you only heard of. Merrimack Caverns, the Grand Canyon, uh, see some teepees, some buffalo, and on and on it goes. But they were now able to do that. The war was over. The country was getting back in shape. I'd say that's in the 1940s. And this is the kind of car they drove. Man, this was, this was the epitome of uh, luxury and, and class you, like ba back now? then. You, you and I still get turned down by a car like this. But here, one thing I learned from John a long time ago about Route 66 that's really interesting is they never built a Route 66. There were roads in all the little towns that connect Chicago to L.A., but what they did back then was they actually paved the area between 
the cities and towns and states, right? That's exactly right. And it's good that you remember that. And you can tell you're on one of my bus tours and you listened when I talked to you in the past. You know, that nowadays we build roads. But back then, Route 66 was created by doing exactly what he said. Every town had a main paved road. They're their main street through town. But in between, if it rained or something, you couldn't get from town to town. So they needed to connect each town. So they did that. And that's, they ended up creating Route 66 in Illinois. And it was the first state that was continuously paved. 300 miles of paved road. Wow, that was amazing in its day. However, in order to get this connection, a lot of times there was a lot of curves and turns. About 66 wasn't a very safe road to drive. It was paved, but it was also considered bloody 66. A little dangerous to drive. It was a two-lane highway, so you couldn't pass anybody, and if you did, you really took your life in your own hands, right? Well, you could pass if you did it courteously. I have no idea what that means. Back then, even now, we don't have that word in our vocabulary when we drive, but back then, it was a rarity, too. Well, you know, the, the roads were only 16 feet wide. You had no shoulders on it. You had no lights. You didn't have any painted stripes in there. It's hard for us to comprehend that. But to everybody else, the fact that it was paved, what they called hard road then, that was absolutely remarkable. And so it was worth the risk to go on there. 16 feet wide is not very wide. Now we're in Wilmington, Illinois, on Route 66 with the Midwest Classic Auto Museum. And folks, this is really a jewel built on Route 66. But John is the historian of Illinois' Route 66. More things were invented on Route 66 than ever in the history of America. But in Illinois, what is the top three that you have that were new to Illinois, to, to Route 66? Well, this guy was listening to the other times that I've talked, that's for sure. Who hasn't had a corn dog? But over here in Illinois, they call it the cozy dog. It was invented in Springfield, Illinois. Originally, was, I guess they were going to call it a crusty cur, but they end up calling it a cozy dog. Nowadays, you see it all over the place, and it's a corn dog. Another thing that was started here on 66, and this was in Bloomington Normal area, was Steak and Shake. You know, they, they, they had a motto, Steak and Shake, and it was, in sight, you know it's right. And they still have that motto if you go into restaurants nowadays, but they don't actually use it. And if you watch them, though, they're making their hamburgers and stuff right when you walk in. You see what they're doing. Because in the old days, you didn't know what was going on in the kitchen of those old restaurants. In sight, you know it's right. And the third thing that was invented right here in Joliet, just down the road over here, uh, 501 Chicago Street, I believe it was, was Dairy Queen, the queen of the dairy products. Right over there, the building is still stands. It's not a Dairy Queen anymore, but the building still stands. The first Steak and Shake building still stands, and Cozy Dog is still operating in Springfield. I got to touch on one more thing that's mind-boggling to me, but the first drive-up window for a restaurant was in Illinois, correct? In Springfield, that's that's what their sign says out over there, and uh, 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 it's a small little bitty building amongst all these big buildings downtown Springfield, you know, because they got all the, the, the government buildings and stuff. And there it is, this one little thing. It's a made right. Big sign there, first drive up window. As far as I know, they were the first. Let the fans know where they can get a hold of you or, or find out more about your tours and stuff like that. And let me know what you think of this jewel here in Wilmington, Illinois, the Midwest uh, classic Auto Museum. I'm just going to give you a phone number. That's the best way. You know, I still have a flip phone, by the way. That's I'm still kind of old fashioned. Eight one five four five eight six six one six. Now that's how you can get in touch with me. And I can show you how to get down the road here and how you can get to places like Midwest Classic. You walk in here and you step back in time, and that's you know that's the magic of '66. You can go to these old restored gas stations that we have. I do a lot of preservation work. And, and you walk in and you step back in time. But when you step into here, it's the same thing because of all these cars. 
Your mind goes back to your first date, maybe, huh? your high school days, or your parents telling you about it, or the first time you rode in a classic. You've got to stop here to get that feeling. That's what it's about, the feeling, the nostalgia, right here in Wilmington. John, thank you for coming on our show today. And, uh, you know, whenever I call this gentleman, he's always open to come on. If you'd like to listen to, I believe we did four radio shows on my site, and that's RichieZ.com, R-I-C-H-I-E-Z-I-E.com. There's over 100 radio shows on Chicago history and automotive heaven, but I remember doing, I think, at least four shows with John about the history of Illinois Route 66. One thing else I would like to add to this, I've done over a thousand tours in downtown Chicago myself. You can blame him for some of the style I have with uh, doing my tours. John is uh, one of the things I've taken, some of his ideas, some of his things, but you can Start by going to RichieZ.com. We are booking tours this year with anywhere from four people to 50 people on a bus. But we actually have private tours that I started doing, and they're doing really well. My phone number is 312-841-2560. Thank you, John. Thank you very much for having me, and I hope to see everybody on Route 66. 1950 Merck. These were, man, they called them lead sleds. This is a true classic automobile. This was a true suicide door from the factory. But what's really cool about this car, this car was customized by Voodoo Larry out of Elk Grove Village. Voodoo Larry has made this into a art. Uh, rat rods, street rods, and true classics um, modified, customized, and all of that. Another beauty here at the Midwest uh, Auto Museum in Wilmington, Illinois. Since we're on Voodoo Larry, let's not even uh, go any further, but show you this really interesting uh, tea bucket, they called them back then. It's a 1930 uh, Model A Ford. But the, what's really unique about this is when you build one of these rat rods, you use parts from all kinds of different vehicles. The radiator shroud on this one is actually Studebaker. The headlights, man, I, I remember them, but I don't know where they came from. But the whole suspension, the engine, the drivetrain, the whole vehicle is super customized. And I think Voodoo Larry was one of the first that actually made a vehicle ride, one of these rat rods ride extremely low to the ground. Another great car by Voodoo Larry over at Midwest Classic Auto Museum in Wilmington, Illinois. This is about stories, you know. Telling stories about Chicago history, about Illinois is one of my fortes. I've done thousands of hours of tours, but this is a real cool story, um, the Blues Brothers. Now, Chicago was the birthplace of the motion picture industry in the beginning. But let me tell you something. They stopped filming when they all moved out to California. What I mean by when they started here was even Charlie Chaplin did six of his first silent flicks here in Chicago, Illinois. Now, people want to know how did this happen? How did this all move around and this and that? A short version of this story is this. Chicago didn't have enough room, number one, to film motion pictures back then. California was nothing. It was a desert. It was just, you know. So California offered the motion picture industry all the land it wanted. But also, California had one other thing that was unbelievable compared to Chicago, and that was the weather. So 1980s, these two gentlemen, Jake and Elwood, went to see the mayor of Chicago, who was Jane Byrne. And I called Jane one of Chicago's heroes because she did a lot for Chicago. But actually, they went to see Jane Byrne because they had this uh, script that they wrote called The Blues Brothers. And they wanted to film it in their hometown, Chicago, Illinois. In fact, it was uh, John Bellucci's hometown. So Jane Byrne allowed them. It was the first motion picture filmed in Chicago 
was the Blues Brothers. Now, Jane Byrne was from a different, uh, she was from the machine era, but she was a different type of politician because um, normally politicians will tell you, hey, put some money in my campaign fund and I'll let you do what you want to do. Jane Byrne told the Blues Brothers that if, when the picture's finished, she wanted them to donate $50,000 to a Chicago charity, a children's charity. And you know what, Jane, thank you for doing what you did with Blues Brothers because since then, Chicago has become one of the capitals of the motion picture industry. People go, how can that be? Why and what and this and that? Well, number one, they couldn't build a dra the backdrop that Chicago has for the motion picture industry. So that's one of the reasons that they uh, picked Chicago for doing these motion pictures. But it's a huge industry. I think last year was in the excess, they spent in excess of about a half a billion dollars. Rumor has it, anywhere from three quarters, not three quarters, but about 300,000 to about half a billion dollars um, filming motion pictures in Chicago. And there's a number of television shows being filmed in Chicago. So thank you, Jane Byrne. Thank you, Blues Brothers. Unbelievable history in Chicago, Illinois. Boy, folks, I still remember the day working in a repair shop, fixing cars, changing antifreeze every year, doing all kinds of things like that. But Presto antifreeze and oil and, and every kind of additive and grease and all of that used to come in a metal can. And they're very desirable. Now, you're seeing a really um, assortment of different cans uh, from the oil industry to antifreeze and all of that. Uh, any of this stuff, um, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. People think that this is uh, worth a fortune because they watch uh, television shows and some of these shows have this stuff, uh, you know, and they're bringing big dollars. Well, it's cool to put on the shelf. The wings of an eagle, the wings of an angel. Uh, if any of you are uh, listeners or viewers of my show, you'll know that the last couple of years, I had a sleeve done and a tattoo, and I have two eagles on the, on the sleeve, one on the upper half and one on the lower half. Um, I believe in angels, and I believe in angels' wings, but the eagle is uh, a part of my history, and I'll tell you why. Uh, my mother's maiden name was Eagle, so the eagles are on my motorcycle, and I have a tattoo with two eagles on my sleeve. Hi everyone, uh, Mike from Midwest Classics on 66. This is one of our rarer vehicles we have on display, a 1952 Kaiser Darren. Very rare vehicle to have in uh, on display here. It's one of three made in this colour combination with the paint and the interior and it's all original, unrestored. It came with 24 karat gold rather than chrome, which was an option from the factory. Also, it was made famous with the sliding pocket doors which were only on these vehicles, not on any other vehicle ever made. They were bought out two months before the Corvette to take the title of uh, America's first sports car. And uh, Corvette weren't very happy, so they went into heavy production to try and combat it. Kaiser and Darren only made 435 of these vehicles before they were out of business. And exceptionally rare to get hold of and exceptionally rare to have unrestored. Um, we've got it uh, proudly on loan. 56 Lincoln Premier. Now this car, you know what, every one of these cars here is just amazing. We're at the uh, Midwest Classics in Wilmington, Illinois. But this car is uh, really cool in its own little way. This was probably one of the longest production automobiles ever made. This car is actually 24 and a half feet long. It has the uh, factory built uh, Continental kit on the back, but this was the ultimate parade car. Uh, back in the 50s, they used this thing and even in the early 60s as a uh, television car where the stars were driving around in them. You know, I, I go with prices sometimes, and this, this thing back in 1956 brought $5,980. 
I think the average uh, Chevrolet back then or an average Ford was under $2,000. So can you imagine spending that kind of money? Um, to this very day, man, if I was in a parade, this is the vehicle I'd like to be in. You could actually sit back, relax, and enjoy the parade, and people could see you. 1930 Cadillac Roadster. This is one of 34 made. There's only, or 54 of these were made. You know, before I get out of today's show, I want to mention a number of things. Midwest Classic Auto Museum on Route 66 is closed for the season. Before you go out there, uh, definitely check to see if they're open or when they open or uh, reopen for the new season. A1 Chicago Tours with Richie Z. Historic downtown and that. Um, to book me, call 312-841-2560. Uh, you can also go to the website where we have, I believe, around 25 or 30 television shows now where we're going to be posting shows every week or so. And that is R-I-C-H-I-E-Z-I-E, RichieZ.com. I'd like to thank John Weiss for being in with us uh, on today's program. Um, also, um, we're working on a number of things right now. We've got the Pontiac Museum shot. I did a, a piece out in Phoenix, Arizona at the uh, Hall of Flame Museum, which is the largest uh, museum with uh, fire apparatus equipment. So that's going to be coming up soon. We're also working on uh, some of the historic places in Chicago, historic churches and all of that. Um, you know what, I'd like to thank all my friends um, for all the years of support and everything else. Last December, December 1st, was my 30th year um, in television and radio. And I've done over a thousand television shows, over a thousand hours of tours in downtown Chicago. Hey, it's Richie Z. I'd like to thank you all for watching and listening and being a fan. And we got a lot of things coming up. Give me a call at 312 841 2560.